Well, good morning. It's good to be back and to be with all of you this All Saints Sunday. All Saints Day, this day, reminds us of the great communion of saints, transcending time and place of which we are all a part of. Last night, I had the privilege and honor of preaching and celebrating at our All Soul service, a service that is dedicated to celebrating the dead, those whom we have buried and see no longer, a service that in many ways is a funeral mass, a celebration of lives past. All Saints is much broader than that. We celebrate the lives before us while also recognizing who we are and who we are striving to be today, but also lifts up the hope of tomorrow and the saints that will come after us when we are no longer here. So it's a celebration of the past, our present, and our future. This is also a Sunday we traditionally reserve for baptisms. And we invite everyone here today to recommit to carry the faith forward. An invitation for all of us to say yes once again in renewing our own baptismal vows. So it's a big Sunday indeed. A Sunday where we hold the grief of the past, the difficulties and challenges of the present, and the hope of tomorrow. So when I was a child, growing up in the Catholic Church, I had a book on the saints. It was a colorful book. It went through many of the different saints, starting with St. Stephen's, our first martyr. And it told their story, how they became saints and why. And I loved reading this book, hoping and praying that I could be like them one day except, of course, the martyred ones. <laughs> I didn't want to be martyred for obvious reasons. I still have my favorite saints, always St. Saint Francis, St. Saint Teresa, St. Joan of Arc, St. Catherine. I particularly have an affinity for the women saints. And so today is a day to remember them, but not just them because today we celebrate all the saints. One of my favorite pastors and preachers and writers is Nadia Bolz Weber. She's a Lutheran pastor and writer. And she has this to say about what it means being a saint. And I couldn't find better words of my own, so I'm gonna read this to you. To be clear, this isn't like a cult of saints or anything. We don't need special saints to intercede for us because God listens to them more since they were basically just better Christians than we are. What we celebrate when we celebrate all saints is not the superhuman faith and power of a select few, but it's God's ability to use flawed people to do divine things. We celebrate all on whom God has acted in baptism, sealing them, as Ephesians says, with the mark of the promised Holy Spirit. We celebrate the fact that God creates faith in God's people, and those people, through ordinary acts of love, bring the kingdom of heaven closer to earth. We celebrate that we have in all who have gone before us what St. Paul calls such a great cloud of witnesses, and that the faithful departed are as much the body of Christ as we all are. And so today, we baptize and we all here get to renew our own baptismal vows. And by virtue of these promises we made in the past and are going to make today, we are made saints and part of this cloud of witnesses, and all by God's grace and love. So parents of those who are about to baptize these beautiful souls, to the godparents and grandparents and their families who are gathered, 
I'm speaking to you now directly, so listen up. As parents and godparents and grandparents, as the primary saintly examples to your children, you have a big job. You are choosing today, both for yourself and these future saints, a certain way of life. You are choosing to say yes to respecting the dignity of every human being. Think about that and what that means. You are choosing to love your neighbor as God loves you. You are choosing to serve Christ in all people. And you're choosing to strive for justice and peace among all people. These are big promises being made before this community and before God. So you're not in the hot seat at all. But are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah? Because these beautiful souls will watch your every move. Trust me, I raised one of those. And when she was about five or six, she used some colorful language, which I know who she got it from. <laughs> so they're watching you. They're copying you. How you treat each other and how you treat others that maybe are not like you. They watch what you say and how you say it and who you say it to. Remember that your words matter. You're making a choice that from this day forward and every single day after that, you're choosing love and the way of Jesus Christ. The bar is set high and rightly so. You're choosing this community to walk alongside you as well. So that everything you say and everything you do, even how you live out your civic life this coming Tuesday, is done through the lens of love and is done through the lens of compassion. So that the better angels of our nature, our saintly life, the promises we made at our baptisms are always shining through the lives we live. So yesterday, we got a new presiding bishop, Sean Rowe, and he, during his sermon, reminded us that Jesus, in today's gospel, did the part that only God can do. The raising of Lazarus from the dead, the vanquishing of death. However, he also commanded his followers and the believers that were there to do the unbinding. He commands us to unbind ourselves and others from the things that keep us small and scared or from doing God's work. He reminded us that we do this together by collaborating and by sharing of God's abundance and love, proclaiming that Jesus is resurrection and life to all, and that this work is done together. This beautiful cloud of witnesses from the past, the present, and the future. And so I leave you now with words from one of my favorite preachers and priests, Barbara Brown Taylor, an incredible writer, from her work called A Great Cloud of Witnesses. What makes a saint? Extravagance, excessive love, flagrant mercy, radical affection, exorbitant charity and moderate faith, intemperate hope, inordinate love none of which is an achievement, a badge to be earned, or a trophy to be sought. All are secondary byproducts of the one thing that makes us a saint, which is the love of God, which is membership in the body of Christ, which is what all of us, living and dead, remembered and forgotten, great souls and small, have in common. Some of us, may do more with that love than others and may find ourselves able to reflect it in a way that causes others to call us saints. But the title is one that has been given to us all by virtue of our baptisms. 
The moment we rose dripping from the holy water, we joined the communion of saints and we cannot go back any more than we give back our names or the blood in our veins. Such a cloud of witnesses, the great cloud of witnesses includes all of us, a clan made kin by Christ's blood. There are heroes and scoundrels at the party, beloved aunts and estranged cousins, relatives we adore, and yes, even those who plainly baffle us. They are all ours. We are all included. We worship amidst a great fluttering of wings, with a whole host of heaven crowding the air above our heads. Call their names and hear them answer present. They belong to us and we to them. And as their ranks swell, so do the possibilities that open up in our own lives. Because of them and because of one another and because of the God who binds us all together, we can do more than any of us had dreamed to do alone. Amen. <laughs>